Yeah, um, I thought the crowd was electric. It was great to have uh, that kind of atmosphere, which we've had throughout the year. The, the fans have been really consistent. Um, and done a great job for us. So that helps energize our players. Our players started fast. Um, the, the offense staff had a great plan and executed the plan. But at the end of the day, the, the ability to run the ball opens things up and gives you the ability to do a lot of things offensively, which we were able to do. We probably didn't get um, Kentucky's back from best shot. I know they got a better team than they played to tonight. And um, in the SEC, you know, it's, it's it. the humility is a week away. I've always said it. It's been a mantra I've had all my life. And humility is always one week away in terms of your preparation, just like for us next week. How important uh, was it getting off to the start like you guys did? Well, I mean, we haven't done it. And, you know, and we still won. So uh, it, it certainly helps to start fast. It helps to, to do things well and play well and have a good plan and execute the plan. But it doesn't mean that the times we didn't, the plan wasn't good. We just we didn't always execute it. And um, we played well offensively, especially tonight, and uh, executed well. So that, that, that definitely helps momentum-wise. Coach Carson mentioned y'all might have taken a slightly different approach to your practice with regards to the start. Just curious, what would you attribute to success? <clears throat> He didn't do anything different in practice. I mean, I don't, I don't know what he's referring to. Um, uh, maybe offense changed something up to start faster. I, I, I don't know. We, we did the same practices we, we've been doing. Um, I attribute the success starting to uh, execution. Uh, Carson was really in rhythm early. And then when you run the ball and you have play action and your offensive line protects, you have good throwers and catchers, you, you, you're going you're gonna to do well. I mean, they did well on us. When you have good pass protectors and a good thrower, and you've got the ability to run the ball, it makes it makes it hard to defend as a defensive team because they, they stand back there, they have all day because you're protected and you can't cover them at all. Kirby, conversely, I think it's been 42 games now since you guys uh, given up 100 yards to a back, Davis came in pretty high. What, what do you, you know, everybody commits to the run. What, what do you do different that's taking no, away, I guess, 2020 the last time somebody went for 100 yards? I don't know that we do anything different, but we have good players, we have good coaches, and you have good players and good coaches. You execute at a high level. Uh, Trey Scott and, and, and our defensive staff, they, they believe in striking blockers and playing the run. And, you know, we, we probably haven't played the run as good this year as we could, but it wasn't for lack of trying or lack of tackling. And, and, you know, the first thing we did on Monday after the Auburn game was we showed them 10 clips of unbelievable run defense against Auburn. We had some unbelievable uh, strikes and blow delivery and getting off blocks, and that's what playing run defense is. I mean, we were really positive with them and showed them doing it right, and they, they responded to that. Coach, would you say this was a complete performance by both offense and defense? And if not, what will it take to get there? I thought it was a really, really good performance by offense. I thought defensively there was times that we were you know, off balance, and uh, the offense you know, made them play a little. Our offense made them play a little uh, left-handed in terms of you, know, you can't sit there and, and be methodical if you're down that quickly. We knew that they would struggle to play from behind. That's not their style of play. Uh, so it, the, the, the quick start played big time to our advantage. Now, it wasn't a complete performance on defense. I mean, statistically, it'll say that in terms of the numbers, but not, not for what I would like to have. Several players mentioned Tuesday's practice as they felt like it was big and how they were able to play. What did you see on Tuesday from just how they attacked it and, and what it looked like? It was really physical. They, 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 they bought into the physicality. We told them all week that it was going to be the most physical game. and They believed it. and They, they practiced really physical Tuesday and Wednesday, and I thought that was indicative of the way they were going to play the game. What have you seen from Rara in recent practices, and then obviously in the community that he had, just what impact that he did? Yeah, he, he, he's the biggest guy that can change our offense because we have some guys that can do things. Obviously, Brock is special, and Carson's played well, and, and there's a lot of guys that can do things. but. It, it, it loosens your defense up when you've got a, a guy over their X that can win some one on ones. And um, if he comes to life and keeps growing like he's done, he makes us uh, he makes us harder to defend because you know with a lot of answers you have, it's hard to answer if, if the guy can just go up and catch the ball one on one. What were you thinking uh, when Sad has to come out of the game, Jared goes in, and, and what did you see in, in that little transition period? I wasn't thinking much. I mean, Jared goes with our ones every day in practice. He gets probably 30% of the one trips, and he does a great job. Jared is a, a, a 
incredible athlete. We bring her the uh, highest speed of all our defensive linemen and offensive linemen. I, I, I trust her a lot. So it was great that it was a position that we have depth at. What do you say to critics saying Georgia hasn't looked like a number one team after tonight's performance? I don't say anything. About our performance. And, and, I mean, I, I didn't say anything when we didn't look well. I'm not gonna say anything now. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned with what we can do from this game to get better for the next one because we want to be elite and get better. Do you feel like you were the number one team in the country tonight? I don't care. I don't care. You know, I want to be the number one team at the end of the year. And the goal to get there is to get better. I, I could care less when anybody else is. Kirby, do you think it was a matter of time before you guys had a, a more complete performance? Not that it was complete tonight. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I told y'all that our offense has been really good at camp, and they've uh, they've been really explosive, and it, they were really special with Branson because it gave you a, a bigger dynamic running the ball. And uh, we we have a good quarterback. We have some good weapons, um, and we, we've got to continue to get better. But. Uh, very pleased with where they are. I was very pleased with what they are after each and every game. Coach, how important is it to get Kendall back like it did tonight and pair him with Dejon? How do you think Kendall did? I thought Kendall did a great job tonight. Kendall hit it, and, and Mike talked about it during the week. He said, we got to get somebody that can get us, you know, three, four, five yards, and we can't be behind the sticks like we were at Auburn. And uh, I thought Kendall brought a little hefty punch, stuck it up in there. I said, we got a lot of yards after contact. And it's the first time that I thought he looked healthy all year. Six weeks in now, what do you feel like the identity is of your football team? We can take a punch and we can give a punch. Jamal said recently he felt like he started the season average just sack and a half tonight. What have you seen from him the last couple of weeks to kind of spark a performance like this? Um, great leadership. Uh, he's you know, he was dinged up in the all the game and pushed through and um, he, he, he you know he was he's been hurt all week, really playing hurt and uh, he, he had we had a plan to you know, be able to pressure some and he, he got the benefit of that. You know, it's very rare that we get to play a team that drops back and plays what I call you know, real drop back football. Kentucky does that, and it gave us a chance to rush a little bit and do some things that other teams don't give us a chance to do. Y'all have been one of the best third down defenses in the country all season. I think Kentucky was two of 11 tonight. Just what, what are the keys to being good on that down in modern college football? Being offenses? good on first and second down. Because if you're good on first and second down, you know what it does to third down? It makes it really long. <laughs> when they're in third and long, you're really good. So I would venture to say that our third and longs that we defended have been longer than their bounces in the country, which is statistically you win third down by getting them in third and long. If they're in third and one and two, I bet you we're not very good. <laughs> you know, they, they, they converted on fourth down on us tonight. It was fourth and two, you know. So it's one of those deals that uh, you get them in third and long. You don't let people run the ball. And uh, you play good defense behind it. But we have been proud of that group. I mean, we, we, you know, our guys took some blows and took some jabs after the Auburn game. And, and we self-reflected and said, hey, look, guys, we've been better third down defense than we've ever been here. And we've got unbelievable defenses in our history. So we don't measure ourselves against the country. We measure ourselves against ourselves. What you see from the offense right before half, you guys were able to get, well, not a lot of time, get in field goal range, get another field goal. Uh, just how the offense operated right there with limited amount of time? Well, it was created by the defense getting stopped, in which we have not uh, been great at this year. We always like to win the halftime deal. The, the, and we have not really done that well this year. I've had, you know, call a timeout, let a team score. I didn't call the timeouts this time. He helped me out by throwing the ball. So we got to save our timeouts, and we wanted to be aggressive if they didn't hit a great punt. And, and Mike called the, the good plays, and Carson was patient enough to hit the back. I mean, if he just checks down to the back, we're going to get a field goal. And uh, he did that. Coach, you pride yourself on humility and being a student of learning and getting better. What's one thing that you were proud of that your guys did tonight? And what's an area of improvement going into Nashville next weekend? The thing I was most proud of was the physicality. We, we talked about that people can't match our connection. And nobody really believes that matters, or at least I, I don't know how much people believe it matters. We do. And we think that what we do all off season in terms of the connection with each other, combined with our physicality, is what makes us dangerous. And uh, we used the, the wrecking ball analogy, and we showed wrecking balls all week and just said it's going to get more and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger the wrecking ball is, you know, force equals mass times acceleration. And we, we talked all week about a lot of mass and a lot of acceleration. And I thought that our offensive line, what I, when you say what was I proud of, 
their ability to run the ball against Kentucky was the difference in the game. What do you think Brock can do if he just gets in the wide open? <laughs> Well, it's 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 when you have the ability to run the ball. Like everybody just thinks, oh, there's Brock Bowers, key him. Well, you can't just key him because you, when you play zone defense, you don't know who has him. <clears throat> when you play man defense, you can't cover him. So there's a, there's illusions, you know. There's a rocket motion, and, and one guy has the receiver. The receiver goes across the field. Now that defensive back that had the receiver, he has Brock. He didn't know he had Brock before the motion occurred. So there's bumping going on. There's all kinds of action going across the field, and it's a it's a nightmare because if you put your eyes in the backfield and you think you got to stop the run, 19's behind you. Uh, and I'm sure if teams wanted to stop 19, they could, but we got we got other answers. No, Darius or uh, David Daniel. What are those guys dealing with? Yeah, both of them weren't able to make it. One of them dealing with sickness, and one of them couldn't be with us. So, Coach, I asked you at the beginning of the year what your team might be elite at. You said you didn't know. We're halfway through the season. What do you think you're elite at? Taking a punch and giving a punch. You speaking of that in the first in the first half, uh, you know they they had a they were moving the ball. They had a couple of big penalties that really took them out. It took the momentum away from them. And uh, at the same time, you guys you know answered each time. Did you, you just uh, that first quarter? The uh, how big were the the penalties that kind of hurt them and and sort of you guys were able to seize momentum? I think. Yeah, I thought the momentum with the big the rah rah play because I didn't think it was a touchdown. You know, I couldn't see from where I was, and then they were yelling in the box that it was a touchdown. That was the biggest momentum because it went from was that third down that happened on? I don't know, but it, it was second down maybe I don't know. But when, when we scored a touchdown there, it was like whoa, you know, we got we got huge momentum here. They did have some penalties, and, and I'll say this, you know, I, I, our team had great discipline tonight to not get cheap penalties, and we told them we said, hey, look, Kentucky will have some. Some companies don't have guys push you or shove you or do something to you. I said, just don't respond to it. And I thought our guys were really good. You know, it really cost them on the drive. They stopped us, and they uh, and then and, and they had a kid hit said, and that converts the third down that we didn't convert, and we go down and score that drive. So people don't ever talk about the discipline our team has. I I I, I so respect our guys for not retaliating or taking shots um, when people do things, you know, to, to take shots at you. How valuable in the long run was getting guys like Brock Vandegrift on the field, getting them in situations like this and letting them play like they were able to it's in that great. It's great. I mean, if he has to go in and play, he's going to be more and more ready. He gains confidence each time he goes out there. And speaking of establishing that, how important was it for Pierce Berlin and Moss Money to really be helping big game time reps also? It's awesome. they got to get better, though. They, they go out there and play against the same guys the other guys do. And, they got to be able to block people and play physical, and, and that's something that they, they 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 got a lot better last week in practice because we made them um, go block and go be physical, and they got to continue to do that if they're going to play. So the second time in two weeks, you got the disconcerting signal penalty, and it obviously let, helped lead to their touchdown, one of their two touchdowns. It seems like the guys were a little bit confused as to why that call was being made. Had, did you get any word from officials in terms of why that that's being called that way? It's complicated. <laughs> That's a tough call. It's complicated. <laughs> I can't, I can't get into it. Maybe, maybe above some of y'all's football IQ. No offense. Yeah. Kirby, uh, Tebo was talking about the, the win streak and how you, you mentioned taking punches and, and how you get everybody's best game. And he said it was important to, to celebrate the win, and that yeah. that was something that you had done. How, how have you kept the team up when it has been such a grind and you are getting everybody's best game? I don't know that we get everybody's best game. That's that's like that's like everybody. I mean, everybody should get everybody's best game. They're not just giving us their best game because of our ranking or because of our winning streak or any of that. They they, they want to play their best game because that's what they need to do. And just like we want to play our best game regardless of who we're playing, but. Um, I am enjoying the wins. I, I cherished the hell out of the win last week. I told y'all, I knew it was going to be 10 times harder to play on the road at Auburn than any, any game we had had. And I knew this week, this was really their first road test, and, uh, and, and it was going to be an advantage for us in terms of that. I mean, it's a, it's a factor, guys. When you play on the road in the SEC, it's hard. And um, I knew we'd have good juice ready to come out. And, um, and our guys, when they get challenged, they want to go play well. So. I embrace winning and enjoying the moment. I'm not going to sit back and, and think that you're just going to – it's not going to go on forever. And, and, and when we do lose, when that happens, we're going to move to the next one too.
Like it's gonna move, life is gonna go on, the sun's gonna come up tomorrow and we're gonna have to get better. I wanna go back on that wrecking ball um, that you were talking about. Like in my head I'm envisioning Miley Cyrus, but what are you, is it like an actual wrecking ball? What are you? Miley Cyrus is. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd do a wrecking ball. Well, Google yeah, it. It's all about wrecking ball. Yeah. Huh? Never, never she came in like a wrecking ball. I know here at church. Wrecking. Google it. Yeah. So were you showing videos of like, what specifically, is it a wrecking ball going into a wall or is there a place or things like that? Like what were you? Force equals mass times acceleration. So we wanted a lot of mass. What is a lot of mass? More hats. What is acceleration? More speed. And we wanted that going into them. And we wanted to do it connected. Like we wanted to be connected in our physicality. And we showed videos of a wrecking ball. It's just a big ball hitting the building. I mean, it's knocking it down. And each week, each day in the meeting, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And we wanted to be the wrecking ball. Let's take two more questions. Coach seemed pretty animated with some time you won up front today. What was the message? Well, there's it, hidden yardage, right? I mean, we, we, we got to feel the ball to not let the ball bounce and roll and get down. I mean, you don't want to start on your own two. It takes a lot of confidence to run up there and catch the ball. Sometimes the greatest return you ever have is the ball you fair caught. Um, and he's, he's done a tremendous job for us. That kid takes so much pride doing it right. I love him to death. And if we wouldn't clip, he would have had an outstanding return tonight, but he, he didn't even need to clip. Have you always said Kentucky's won many more physical games to win a physical game like that in the way it was won, especially compared to how relatively close they played you recently? What does that say about this team in particular? Says we take a punch and give a punch. <laughs> <laughs>